Major breaking news out of the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals in Chicago. A single judge, Judge Frank Easterbrook, has entered an order staying, which means freezing, the decision by District Court Judge Steve McGlynn in the Southern District of Illinois, which had found that the so-called assault weapon ban and the magazine ban by the state of Illinois were unconstitutional under the Second Amendment. I want to talk about this administrative stay and what it means for all of us when we get back. Hey folks, I'm Mark Smith, host of The Four Boxes Diner, proud American gun owner, constitutional attorney, member of the United States Supreme Court Bar, and proud author of the brand new book, Disarmed, What the Ukraine War Teaches Americans About the Right to Bear Arms. You're going to like that book quite a bit. Okay, folks, I, I want to talk about what just happened today and what it all means. In the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals, which is the federal appeals court, overseeing, among others, Stephen McGlynn and the federal judges, including Judge Kendall in the Northern District of Illinois, a single judge, Judge Frank Easterbrook, has entered a stay of the preliminary injunction order that was entered by... Federal District Court Judge Steve McGlynn. If you remember, the state of Illinois enacted a assault weapon ban and magazine ban. These are, of course, dealing with ordinary semi-automatic rifles and standard capacity magazines of more than 10 rounds. This was litigated with four consolidated cases, meaning it was challenged as unconstitutional under the Second Amendment, which they, in my view, undoubtedly are. A federal district court judge, Stephen McGlynn, entered an order enjoining the enforcement of the state laws on the grounds that these laws violated the Second Amendment because the state of Illinois tried to ban commonly owned arms or arms that were in common use by millions of Americans, which we talked about on this channel a million times. The state of Illinois sought an emergency, an emergency made an emergency application to the Court of Appeals for the Seventh Circuit, which is the appellate court that oversees the district court judges in Illinois, including Stephen McGlynn, as well as the Chicago federal district court judges that we've been critical of recently. Because this was what's known as an administrative stay, meaning a short-term quickie stay, a single judge heard this application without any real argument, and Judge Frank Easterbrook heard this, and he entered a stay basically saying that the injunction entered by Judge McGlynn in our favor has been frozen or stayed by the Seventh Circuit pending a full briefing on the question and a full consideration of the topic. Now, I want to say something about Judge Eastbrook, and I don't want to beat up Judge Eastbrook here, uh, known about Judge Eastbrook and, and for a long time. He's a longstanding traditional law and order conservative judge. He has been literally for decades. He is no friend of the Second Amendment, but he is a serious, very smart individual, comes out of the law and economics school, which is very popular with guys like Richard Posner uh, back in the 80s. Even Stephen Breyer dabbled in this. But again, I digress. The point is that Judge Easterbrook historically has been viewed as not good on the Second Amendment. Two examples. If you remember the United States Supreme Court, issued a, a famous case, right, a famous opinion in McDonald versus Chicago, McDonald versus Chicago in 2010. That was a major decision that said that the Second Amendment applied to the states and localities through the 14th Amendment. Now, the author of the McDonald decision, when it was in the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals, was none other than Judge Frank Easterbrook, who is the judge that entered the stay in favor of Illinois today. Moreover, Judge Easterbrook is also the author of another case that we haven't talked a lot about on this channel, no need, but I'm going to now. Judge Easterbrook actually also was the author of a case of Friedman versus Highland Park in 2015. And in Friedman versus Highland Park, that was upholding a quote-unquote assault weapon ban in Highland Park, part of Illinois. And the reason why this is significant is there was a, a, a writ of certiorari sought, certiorari was sought to the Supreme Court, and the U.S. Supreme Court said, no, we don't want to hear in that case. Um, there was a dissent 
by Justice Thomas that was joined by Justice Scalia that said that the quote-unquote assault weapon ban in Highland Park was clearly unconstitutional under Heller and should be struck down and the court should take it. I mean, the Supreme Court should take it and strike it down, but that's not what happened. So the point is that Judge Easterbrook has a record of issuing anti-Second Amendment rulings as he sits on the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals. So a little bit of context there. Now, what is happening next steps? The pro-Second Amendment lawyers, the appellees, because now, remember, the appellees at the, trial, uh, at the Court of Appeals were the victorious ones in the trial court in front of Judge McGlynn, right? The, the, the Second Amendment plaintiff's lawyers sought an injunction of the anti, you know, the gun control laws. They won. The state of Illinois took an immediate appeal asking the Court of Appeals to stay, meaning to prevent the lower court decision from continuing in effect and basically bringing back all the gun control laws. Judge Eastbrook has just entered a very short order, which I'll link to down below. It's just a couple sentences saying that, no, I want that Judge McGlynn decision to be stayed, which means to be put on pause for the moment. He then says that he wants a brief or briefs to be submitted by the pro Second Amendment lawyers in the next, uh, I think within the next five days or so. And he wants a couple things addressed, including his decision in the Friedman case. Uh, I suspect that Judge Easterbrook is going to make a decision within the next seven to 10 days as to whether or not to continue the stay. He has a couple options here. He could, number one, he could um, continue the stay and say that I'm going to continue the stay of Judge McGlynn's decision until the Seventh Circuit hears the full-blown case, which will take months. He may say, I'm not going to grant the stay to Illinois. I thought Judge McGlynn got it right. I'm simply going to let it go into effect and let the appeal by the state of Illinois play out over the next several months in the normal course. Or he could also wait for a decision by the United States Supreme Court. Because remember, there's something else you got to keep in mind about this case, is this is to some degree a parallel case to the Bevis case, Bevis versus Naperville, which as you know, uh, what came out of the Northern District of Illinois, which is Chicago. Stephen McGlynn is in the Southern District of Illinois, which we won. The Northern District of Illinois judges in Chicago ruled against the Second Amendment. Uh, the Bevis case specifically uh, went up first to the Seventh Circuit. They asked for a, uh, an injunction in their favor. The Seventh Circuit, just like the Northern District, said, no, we're not going to do it. And then the Bevis plaintiff's lawyers took a, re took a rest request to the U.S. Supreme Court asking that the Illinois law be enjoined immediately on the grounds of the violated the Second Amendment. That was heard by Amy Coney Barrett, or at least she's hearing it. We've talked about this in several videos. And Justice Barrett has specifically um, asked for briefing on this issue. So what we have right now is kind of two cases on a parallel path here. On the one hand, we have this case right here, the case of Barnett versus Rowell, which is in the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeal in front of Frank Easterbrook for the moment, a single judge on whether or not uh, Judge McGlynn's decision should go back into effect or be stayed. We also have on a parallel path a, the case also out of the Seventh Circuit in front of the United States Supreme Court. That's in front of Judge Barrett right now. I have a feeling, given everything going on here, that Justice Barrett is going to refer that question to the entire Supreme Court. And I think the entire Supreme Court is going to make a decision as to whether or not to step in and what's going on in the Seventh Circuit and this Illinois gun control law. I think this is all now coming to some sort of a, a head, if you will. And um, again, we will see, if it was any other judge in the Seventh Circuit, I would say that the, that the Judge Easterbrook administrative law judge position would wait for the Supreme Court to act in the Bevis case. But I think Judge Easterbrook, uh, frankly, is such a famous guy in his own mind that he's going to go ahead and make a decision on his own. He's not going to wait for the Supreme Court. That's my guess knowing Judge Easterbrook, we'll see. And I think he's gonna make a decision one way or the other. He's not gonna wait for the Supreme Court to make a decision in Bevis, although that's probably what he should do, but I don't think he will. And then of course, we'll see what the Supreme Court does because if Judge Easterbrook in the Seventh Circuit refuses to allow the injunction by Stephen McGlynn to go into effect, by Judge McGlynn to go into effect, then of course, the Illinois gun control law will go into effect and all those laws will be deemed illegal or, or, you know, the say all those sort of the gun ban will then go into effect. And then, of course, we don't know what will happen. But the plaintiff's lawyers 
in the Barnett case could then also seek an administrative emergency stay to the U.S. Supreme Court. And now you'll have the Bevis case and this case both before the Supreme Court on whether or not the Supreme Court will step in and enjoin the Illinois law pending the outcome of the appeal to the Seventh Circuit. So there's a lot of procedural things going on here. But the bottom line is uh, this is an unfortunate decision, but it may only be temporary by Judge Easterbrook. I'm not particularly shocked when I saw this as a Judge Easterbrook de uh, quick decision. He's always been bad on the Second Amendment uh, going all the way back, even though he's a quote-unquote conservative, but he's really a law and order conservative and not an originalist and not a constitutionalist. That's my opinion, although he's a very smart judge. Uh, but again, the Supreme Court has spanked him before on Second Amendment cases, and we may find that happening again very soon. Okay, I know this is a little complicated. Hope you learned a little bit something here at the Four Boxes Diner. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. We'll see you again here at the Four Boxes Diner. Order's up. Table 2A.